Father, I desire an unforgettable encounter with your word, with your power. That by your word tonight, the me that came here is not the same me as is living here. La rote mpra talema yam pra katale kata. Yengolo pro to de kati. La tom pra taleka yam pra katale kati. We give it thanks, Father. Blessed be your name, mighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ. This month of May 2024, we deliver maximally for each one. This month of May 2024, you will have reasons to shed tears of joy. And that is why expectation is key. Every time you come to church, every time we pray, we must have solid expectations in place. Coming to church without definite expectation is like playing without knowing. Praying without expectation is like a woman pushing without pregnancy. Expectation is the pregnancy of the spirit. You cannot deliver. You cannot have anything tangible to show without expectation. So tonight, what do you expect from God? 30 seconds again. Speak to God right now. Father, in this area, in that area, Father, I desire this encounter. I desire this presentation. We are just 24 hours to go to the end of the post-resurrection manifestation season. Father, he said, at the end, he shall speak. At the end, the next 24 hours, they are my hours of encounters. They are my hours of visitations. They are my hours of the turning of every captivity. Raise your voice. Whatever unwanted situation that remain are the things you have decided not to let go. But whatever you let go tonight, they are going. Every sickness is disappearing. Every satanic oppression, they are disappearing. Tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. God is ready and I'm ready. Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, it is done. Please get seated and give Jesus a big shout of praise. Praise God, fortune is my portion in 2024. The prophetic theme for this great month of May is my helper has come. Can you say that with me? My helper has come. That means help is not coming. Help is here. Say me, help is here already for me. If you agree, shout it better. Help has come already for me. Find that in John chapter 14, verse 16 to 18. When Jesus was going, he said, As I'm going, I will send another comforter. I will send, I will give you another comforter. Now, the word comforter is from the Greek word paraclete, and that paraclete means helper. Helper. If you look at it in amplified version, of the Bible, Amplified Bible Translation for the Bible. He said, I will pray the Father, I will ask the Father, and the Father shall give you what? Another helper, another helper. That means the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor counselor, the strengthener, the standby to be with you temporarily to be with you just once in a while so that helper is not what you can forget at all he said it shall be in you so so long as you are born again and you are baptized with the holy ghost you can't forget him at all you can't 
So it's the month of the Holy Ghost. It's the month of the Spirit of God. This month, we are going to see the full range manifestations of the Spirit of God in our life. Oh, if you agree, shout the stronger. Amen. And that's why our teaching series, every of our midweek service for this month, is captioned unveiling the hidden ministries of the Holy Spirit. Unveiling the hidden ministries of the Holy Spirit. In this kingdom, what you don't know, you can never enjoy. In this kingdom, even though the provisions are available, the moment you don't understand what has been made available, you cannot enjoy it. So my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people that have ordained and packaged help, packaged assistance, packaged undeniable support system in every area of life to live an enviable life, to live a supernatural life, to live an extraordinary life. They will be destroyed. They will be at the mercy of the enemy because they lack knowledge. Unveiling the hidden ministries of the Holy Ghost. The things that are revealed to us, they are the things we can enjoy. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. said the secret things belong to God. But the things that are revealed, they belong to us and to our children forever. The things that God will be revealing to us this month, our children's children, they will partake of those treasures. The Holy Ghost is, is the greatest treasure on planet Earth. The greatest treasure. You can't truly have the Holy Ghost and be stranded in life. You can't truly have the Holy Ghost and know the ministries of the Holy Ghost and not live an enviable life. To live a pitiable life is an insult on redemption. To be struggling in life struggling with powers of darkness, struggling to make ends meet, is an insult on redemption. And that's why I believe God that as we go through these teachings, somebody's eyes will be open. Somebody's story will change. The days of living Average lives will be over in somebody's life. So the Holy Ghost was given for us to live a life of marvels, a life of wonders, a life that others will be opening their mouth. But what we have today, we have too many powerless Christians. Christians that you can't differentiate them from unbelievers. Christians that suffer what unbelievers suffer. But from this month, the story will be different. I said the story will be different. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now quickly, this evening, we are looking at three Eating functions, eating assignments, eating work of the Holy Ghost in the life of the believer. As we go through it, each one of us will begin to enjoy them. Oh, I'm not hearing amen. <laughs> 
The first one is to recognize that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of power. Tell me the spirit of power. Can you see it better right now? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Say you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Say you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come. The spirit of God is the spirit of power. Somebody is asking, what's the big deal about power? Three things. We need power to command dominion. Psalm chapter 66, verse 7. He said, Rule thou in the midst of the enemies. He said, He ruleth by his power forever. For you to be in charge, for you to be in command, for things to answer for you, for nothing to walk contrary to you, you need power. Say, I need power. Psalm 66, verse 3 again. He said, through the greatness of his power shall his enemies shall the opposition submit themselves. You are not struggling for the enemy to submit. In the midst of enemies, your cup is running over. In the midst of adversity, you are making progress. Even in hard times, you are flourishing. If you are done with shouting stronger, amen. That is power. You subdue every contrary situation and circumstances. You are having it the way you desire. You are not begging issues. You are on top and in command of issues. That is what God created man to be. He created man to exercise dominion. You are not permitted to be subject to anything. Everything is designed to be subject to you. But it takes power to experience that. And that power is domiciled in the spirit of God. Thank God for speaking in tongues. If you are speaking in tongues and you are not enjoying dominion, you are not tasting power. The kingdom of God is not just in words, but in power. If you are powerless, you become a victim of satanic powers. For you to be a believer and they are oppressing you, it's an insult. For you to be afraid of witches and wizards, it's an insult. Jesus, our senior brother, <laughs> evil spirit will sight him from afar and will start crying. Have you come to torment us before our time? To destroy us before our time? It was a Satan tormentor. I am praying that this month, every member of this church shall become a Satan tormentor. That our appearances in our neighborhood after this service, all the witches in our neighborhood, they were going to pack out. That's dominion. You take over your territory. You take over your house. That for your sake, nobody is permitted to have nightmares under your roof. That's power. That's power. So we're not speaking grammar. It's not about phonetics. It's not about knowing the Bible. It's about power. Say me power. <laughs> you are in command of everything on planet Earth. Your health, you are in charge. Your finances, you are in charge. That's what they call power. And that's what the Holy Ghost is giving to us. Or if you are Christian, the stronger. Amen. What more? Power brings comfort. Power brings what? Power makes life easy. When you remove electricity from the city, what do you have? A typical village. All our 
tech devices, the smartphone, the smart TV, the freezer, the washing machine. Our pressing iron. What are they using? Electrical power. So when you take away power from the city, what do you have? Typical village. So when you take power away from the life of a believer, it is a person who is like living in stone age. He's living in the wilderness, not in the garden. So power brings comfort. Power makes life comfortable. I remember while I was in South Africa, there's a building they call the Counting Center. It's reputed to be the tallest building in Africa. It's about 45 or about 55 or 20 floors building. Now, in that building, that's an elevator. From the ground floor to the uppermost floor, can get there when you enter the elevator under 30 seconds. And a lot of tourists go there. You buy your ice cream, buy your drinks, and you enter the lift with AC blowing you. And it is powered. You get up. Now, if we say many people here to get to the and climb the stairs, there's no power. Climb the stairs. Many people will not survive to get to the things floor. Am I correct? on top of sweating and dissipating energy. But when you are powered in a lift, you are not sweating, yet you are ascending higher heights. So the difference is power between the struggling, sweating believer and the one who is comfortable, who is smiling, who is not struggling. What's the difference? Power. That's why we need power. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. That's why we call him our helper, our comforter, to make life comfortable, to make life groovy. Nobody in this church will suffer again. Or oh, if you agree, that the stronger, amen. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of power. Nothing hurts you when you are empowered. Luke chapter 10, verse 17, and verse 19. He said, Behold, I give unto you power over all the powers of the enemy. Verse 19. And nothing shall by what? shall by any means hurt you. You are not hurt by anything. Beginning today, nothing will hurt your health. Nothing will hurt your children. Nothing will hurt your business. Nothing will hurt your family members. So, if not for any other reason, for the sake of your loved ones, get empowered. Understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Dig deeper. Explore deeper into the ministry of the Holy Spirit and secure your environment and secure your family members. See, I received that grace today. Oh, I'm not hearing somebody right now. From today, you'll be rising without sweat. I said from today, you'll be going up without struggling. Not everybody going up is struggling. All those who are going up without sweat, they are people who are powered. They are powered by the Spirit of God. You receive that grace today. See, I received that grace today. The loudest you can right now. What more? Power gives ability. They call it dunamis. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He said, You shall receive ability. Ability that is beyond natural. To be average as a Christian is an insult. When you have supernatural ability. Everything about you is extraordinary. You can't be getting the same result with unbelievers. No. That's why Paul can say, I can do all things. Say me all things. I can do all things. There's nothing I want to learn that I cannot master by the help of the Holy Ghost. If I want to learn engineering, I can learn it. I want to learn law, I can learn it. Anything, I can do all things because I have it inside of me. See me, I have it inside of me. I can do all things. Not that they ask you, can you do this one? They want to give you a job. Can you do this one? I can't do. Can you do this one? You can't do. You have used your mouth to finish yourself. God says you can do. You are saying you cannot do. So who can help you now? 
See, I can do all things. I can do all things that is good by the ability that the Holy Ghost that is dwelling inside of me, anything that is good, I can do. That's how you begin to tap into that resource. That begin to activate that ability. Every time you say you can't, then you end up in the can. Every time you say I can't, then you come out of the can. Stop canning your life. Stop limiting yourself. Stop restricting your destiny. Say I can do all things. <laughs> it's a spiritual power. Number two. Ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of meekness. Tell me the spirit of meekness. I'm not hearing somebody right now. The spirit of meekness that engenders unending growth and expansion. First Peter chapter 3 verse 4. There's a spirit behind the meekness. He said, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. That which is not correctable. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. A meek spirit. A meek spirit. That will give us ability to be meek beyond the natural. The spirit that destroys pride. That's the meaning. The opposite of meekness is pride. And that spirit is the spirit of blessings. Matthew chapter 5 verse 5. He said, blessed are the meek. Blessed are what? The meek will always be blessed. The proud will always be cursed. You can't be meek and not be blessed. If you see anybody who is blessed, that means he's meek. God doesn't bless the proud. Somebody there? So you can't tell me you are meek and we can't see blessings in your life. Blessed are the meek. So when you see a blessed person, it's a meek person. And meekness is not as defined by man. You know, there are human definitions of meekness. There are human definitions of pride. Remember, say, hey, somebody is proud because of the clothes he wore. Somebody is proud because of the way he talks. Somebody is proud. No, that, that is human definition of meekness. Find out what are the scriptural definitions of meekness. He said, humble yourself in the sight of God, not in the sight of men. Men may call you proud, but God sees you as meek. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the heart. Blessed are the meek, because their enlargement, expansion, their growth, their blessings have no limits. They will possess the heart. Nothing can stop the meek. Nothing can limit the meek. The meek cannot plateau. The meek have unending ever increasing, ever growing impact and blessings. See, I received that spirit today. Oh, I'm not hearing somebody right now. Blessed are the meek. Now, who is a meek person? According to the Bible, two things. If you are meek, you are childlike. You are what? Matthew chapter 18, verse 4. Humility and meekness, they are the same thing. Jesus said, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself, whosoever shall humble himself as this little child. So, Jesus likens a humble person, a meek person, to a little child. A little child. The question is, what are the traits of little children? Because we have too many grown-ups in the body right now, in the church. If you're a grown up in the body, then you are proud. A little child, you can easily instruct a little child. You can correct a child without talking back. A child will sit down in the group. A child doesn't keep malice. Anyone you see that keep malice is a grown up person. It's an adult and he's proud. So when you see a man keeping malice with the wife, not talking, is what? Next Sunday we'll talk about that one. It's proud. He said, 
in understanding, be like men. But in keeping of malice, do what? Be like children. When you see two children, when they fight now, after a few minutes, what happened to them again? They start playing the game. You now find husband and wife. One day, two days, three days, not talking times. That's why many are not seeing blessings. You can't be proud and see blessings. So I said, number one is be like a child. Number two, for meekness, be a servant. Be a what? Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to verse 10. He said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ, who taught himself not to be equal with God, even though he was in the form of God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. He made himself of no reputation. That's meekness. And by how? By becoming a servant. Are you a servant? So when you see anybody who is not serving God, he's not, he's proud. You can't be meek and not serve God. At any level. Whether you are governor or minister or senator or MD or CEO, at any level. He said, Jesus, even though he was in the class of God, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant. The spirit of God, the spirit of meekness. So you can't be meek and not serve God. You find the story of Moses, Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. Moses, the meekest man on the face of the earth. Above all men that were upon the face of the earth. Look at the testimony of Moses. Chapter 11, verse 3, Exodus. The meekest man became the greatest man. You can't be meek and remain small. The meekest man. Moreover, the man Moses was very great. Very meek, very great. Very meek, very great. Because the meek we always seek to learn. The meek we know that he doesn't know enough. When you find too many people in church, they know everything. They know the subject of the month already. They know it already. They come to church, they don't come to write anything down. They know what the pastor will say. All those are small, small uh, traits, right? Very meek, very great. Very meek, very great. Truly great people. They are very meek people. They have the trait of to learn at any level. At any level. At any level. And we enjoy all of that by the ministry of the Holy Ghost. These are the hidden ministries, hidden functions, hidden treasures of the Holy Ghost that we need to tap into that will bring about our greatness. Because in this church, nobody will die small. Nobody will end their journey in obscurity. The greatness that God has ordained for us, we are all going to attain it. But these are the provisions God has made available. The spirit of meekness to bring about unending expansion Unending growth, unending increase, unending rise. A meek person, no matter what level he has got to, will say, I have not arrived. A proud person will say, I have arrived. Some people just have some little, little millions in their pockets. They think they have it all. Meanwhile, what they have is just a tip of the iceberg. What they have is just God saying, I want to introduce you, my son, to something bigger. Somebody here, this month, God will multiply you. God will multiply grace upon some people here. God will multiply favor upon somebody here. But you have to tell yourself, I have not arrived. Say me, I have not arrived. I have not arrived. I'm just trying to start. You find Bishop Bishop is saying, I am just trying to start. I'm just trying to start at that level. That's meekness. That's meekness. Number three. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of obedience. Say me, the spirit of obedience. I'm not hearing somebody right now. Ezekiel 36, or 27. We need all these functions of the Holy Spirit. 
I will put my spirit within you. And I will cause you to walk in my status. And you shall keep my judgment and do them. It's the spirit of obedience that empowers us to obey God's word. You cannot obey God in the energy of the flesh. You cannot follow God with your strength. We can only follow God with the help of the Spirit of God. There are instructions God will give us that will be hard on the flesh. But when the Spirit comes, the Spirit of obedience, it will make it easy for us. That's why we need the Spirit. Say, I need the Spirit. And the Spirit of obedience is the Spirit that commands blessings. You can't obey God and not see blessings. This is chapter 28, verse 1 to 3. 28, verse 1 to 3. He said, it shall come to pass if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments. All. Say me all. He said, the Lord thy God will set you on high above all nations of the heart. That's where we are going. I said, that's where we are going. And all this blessing, me, all these blessings. I'm not hearing somebody now. You can mention them. All these blessings. Business breakthroughs, academic excellence, sound health, peace, joy, all these blessings, they will come. Blessings follow obedience. The obedient don't look after blessings. The obedient don't run after blessings. Blessings are ordained to follow obedience. Obedient people don't pray for breakthroughs. Breakthroughs come naturally to obedience. <laughs> Good things of life come naturally to the obedient. A lot of people are praying too much. They are praying too much. After prayer in Winner's Chapel, they still go to other places after services. They still go to prayer mountain, go online, go everywhere, all man of prayer, looking for shortcuts. What they should be obeying about, they are praying about it. Prayers cannot be a substitute for obedience. If we shall obey, all these things shall follow. There are many people in the church, things are following them, they don't struggle. Many more will join that group. If you join us, I thought you say some guy, amen. There are many in this church who are not praying for things. Yes, they don't lack things. I said many more will join that group. The days of praying for things will be over for somebody here. The things others are praying for, you have them in plenty. I said, you have them in abundance. I said, you have them in surplus. But we need the spirit of obedience. Whatever God says, it may not be convenient, but obey it. They lacked wine. He said, fetch water into the water pot. There was no prayer. They just obeyed. They fetch water into the water pot. Now, from the water pot, go and serve the chairman of the wedding reception. There was no prayer. There was no shaking of head. Just carried it. And in the process of obedience, water was turned to the best wine. This month, somebody will see the best wine. The best wine in your marriage. The best wine in your business. The best wine in your career. The greatest testimony of somebody will arise this month. So, I, mean, I need the spirit of obedience. Oh, I'm not hearing somebody right now. Now, let me conclude this evening. Every gift of the Holy Spirit delivers on demand. Delivers how? The Bible talks about the supply of the Spirit. Tell me the supply of the Spirit. Can you get that scripture for me? Is it Philippians chapter 1, verse 7 or so? You know, in basic economics, we talk about demand and supply. So, you have to place a specific demand on the ministry or the function or the work of the Holy Spirit that you want to see in your life. I said Philippians chapter 1. Thank you very much. Verse 19. He said, and the supply. Say me the supply. So, for there to be supply, there must be what? Demand. Luke 11, 13. 
He said, how shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit, give any function, give any gift of the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? So if you don't ask, you never get. That's why nobody gets empowered without prayers. When you find somebody who is judging prayer meeting, that's why many are prayer projects. They say prayer meeting, they say fasting. No. Power is always at a cost. To buy fuel into your car is at a cost. To buy fuel into a generator is at a cost. Power is not free. In the same way, God's power is not free. You want the power of God in your life? Subscribe to fasting and prayers. Say, my soul tested for thee. And my flesh longed for thee to see thy power and thy glory. And you can be empowered and not see glory. Power and glory, they are like five and six. Power and glory, they are like ants in glove. Nobody in this church will see shame again. So when I see somebody see shame, it lacks power. And the last power because it's, it's dodging the demand, the cost of power. When they say prayer meeting, church is county. When they say brick and nothing hard, church is full. <laughs> See, I receive grace today. Now, let me conclude also. Let me add more to that. It's not just praying also. Because God will not just empower you for self-sake. God will empower you for service. James chapter 4, verse 3. James chapter 4, verse 3. James chapter 4. He said, you ask and you receive not. You ask. Holy Ghost, fill me up. To the next level. You are not seeing the power because you ask and miss. Why? Because you are asking so that you consume it upon your loss. For I, me, myself. Those who ask for empowerment for self don't get it. Those who ask for empowerment to be a blessing to serve, they're the one that gets it. God's power is for those who are ready to serve him. If you are saying, Father, empower me, so that when I lay hands upon the sick, the sick will be healed. God says, yes, you are ready. Father, empower me for financial prosperity, so that I want to be, a, to be eradicating poverty around my life. God says, you are ready for it. How God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good? He wasn't sitting about. He wasn't a bench warmer in the church. So, those who are going to have access to God's power are those who are ready for service. Service to bring others out of darkness to the kingdom of God. That's why by the time we start Operation Rescue, we are really going to know those who are going to be candidates of cost power. So when you dodge kingdom service, you are dodging power. When you dodge kingdom service, you are dodging weakness. When you dodge kingdom service, you are dodging obedience. And the person will end up as ordinary persons. Nobody in this church will end as average. Nobody in this church will end in the valley. Every one of us will be sworn in his guys. Lift to the right hand and give thanks to God. Father, I receive grace. I receive grace to serve, to serve, to cry for empowerment to serve, to be in command, to be in command. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace for obedience. I receive grace for meekness. Moses was anointed to bring Israel out of Egypt. Father, I receive grace to be the Moses of my time, to bring men and women out of Egypt, Egypt of poverty, Egypt of lack, Egypt of oppression. Father, anoint me to be the Moses of my time. Father, help me to be an instrument to bring men and women out of darkness into light. Empower me to the next level. Empower me with your power. Empower me with your weakness. Empower me with obedience. I want to be a blessing. I want to be a blessing. I don't want to consume it upon myself. I want to be a channel of your power. I want to be a channel of your wisdom. I want to be a channel of your grace. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your name, Father. 
it is done. If you have received that shout, a stronger amen. amen. Quickly, before we take the communion, Acts chapter 2, verse 8. He said, Repent and be baptized, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Until you are born again, you can't be empowered. Nobody empowers the dead. Anyone who is not born again is spiritually dead. Anyone who doesn't want to be a victim of the powers of darkness. The first step is give your life to Christ. As many as received him, to them he gave power to become the source of God. You are in this service tonight. You are not sure of your salvation. Or you gave your life to Christ before. But certain things have happened. You know that if Christ comes today, you can't make it. Two sets of people. Number one, you want to give your life to Christ for the first time. You want to say, Jesus, save my soul. Jesus, I want to be your son. I want to be your daughter. Or number two, you want to be restored back to the faith. If you are in any of the two categories, wherever you are, make tonight your night. God is asking me to call you out. Stand to your feet. Carry your bags. You want to give your life to Christ or you want to rededicate your life. Stand to your feet. Carry your bags. Carry your Bible. Come to the phone right now. Very quickly. Start coming right now. Make tonight your night of salvation. Tonight is your night of salvation. You need to be born again. Let the officials come this way very quickly. If you are coming, come very quickly. You want to be born again. You want your souls rescued. You want to be empowered. You don't want to live at the mercy of the powers of darkness. You want the power of God to be ruling, to be prevailing, to be in command, not to be subject to others, but everything subject to you. You want to be part of that? Stand to your feet right now. If you are coming, come very quickly. You are giving your life to Christ or you are rededicating your life. Please come right now. Make tonight your night of salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ. In case you are coming, come very quickly as we bless the communion. Father, I decree every table under the sound of my voice, blessed and sanctified. I decree the bread, blessed, to be the flesh of Christ. I decree the corpse, blessed, to be the blood of Christ. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Father, as we partake of the communion today, the grace required for each one of us to constantly be thirsting for more of God's power, more of God's meekness, and more of the spirit of obedience we partake of it today in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace to serve with our energy, with our time, with our resources in advancing the cause of the kingdom tirelessly in increasing dimension by this communion is ever delivered to us in Jesus' name. Church, stand to your feet. Raise your voice now. 30 seconds. What else do you want? As I partake of this communion, what do you want from God? What do you want from God? Father, I want to be like Christ. The same mind in Christ. The mind of service. The mind of humility. The mind of obedience. The life that works in power. The life that works in power. A life that is tormenting Satan. Father, I want to be like Christ. That at my appearance, evil spirit will be flying out. Witches will be under torture and torment. Father, by this communion today, empower me to be a joint heir indeed with Christ. That whatever bows to Christ must bow to me. Whatever bows to Christ must bow to me. Spirit, soul, and body. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. It is done. Father, honor your word in the life of everyone. By this communion tonight, I decree healings. I command instant deliverances. I decree fresh empowerment in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. It is done.